King Kalanhad the Great, the Silver Knight. No figure looms larger in Ferelden's imagination than the man who united the warring Alamari and forged a kingdom. Greatness often has humble origins. Tradition holds that Kalanhad was born in the tenth year of the Exalted Age, the third son of a merchant from Hyever. He spent his early years in the port city, but when the family fell on hard times, he was sent to squire for his distant cousin, Ser Ferranen, a knight in service to Arl Tenedor. At the time, the Ferelden Valley was filled with Arls and Terrans with dreams of uniting the nation under their own banner. This state of intermittent warfare had persisted for centuries among the Alamari rulers. Arl Tenedor, despite being little older than Kalanhad himself, was no exception. Ser Ferranen and Kalanhad were with the Arl at West Hills when he was besieged by the forces of a rival, Arl Murden. Murden asked for parley with the young Arl, but Tenador was unwilling to leave the safety of his walls. Instead, he asked for a volunteer among his squires to impersonate him. Kalanhad kneeled before his lord and asked to have the honor. When Kalanhad met Murden on the field, he immediately told the Arl who he really was, and explained that he had come to take the place of his lord. Murden was surprised, but told Kalanhad that he had planned to kill Tenador. He asked the squire whether he was willing to die for his lord. Kalanhad said yes. Impressed by his dedication, Murden offered the boy a place as his own squire, but Kalanhad refused, saying that if Murden had plotted to murder his lord at a parley, then he was no man of honor. The Arl laughed, but conceded the point, and allowed Kalanhad to return to the castle before launching his assault. Murden's forces breached the castle. Both Serferanen and Arl Tenador were killed in the fighting, but Kalanhad found himself face to face with Arl Murden. There, before all of Murden's allies and their soldiers, Kalanhad defeated the Arl in single combat and ordered him to call off his forces. Murden asked Kalanhad what he was fighting for, with his knight and lord dead. The squire replied that he would fight according to his honor. Chantry scribes tell us he spoke thus. You are not a man known for your honor, but I believe you wish to be. You allowed me to live once, and so now I do the same for you. Perhaps if more of our people live by honor, we would learn to trust each other long enough to live together. Humbled by Kalanhad's words and mercy, Murden fell to a knee and declared for all to hear that, while he would never be king, he knew who should be. Murden pledged himself to Kalanhad and gave him Arl Tenador's land, making him a tairn. Thus the merchant's son became one of the most powerful men in Ferelden, yet it was only the first step on his path to greatness. Arl Murden was not the only ally Kalanhad gained that day. He also attracted the interest of the mage advisor to Arl Tenador, Aldenon the Wise. Aldenon was a hedge mage from the Frostbacks who had appeared in the court of Arl Tenador the Elder years earlier offering his service. Accounts say he burst into Arl Tenador's hall and proclaimed, I am the beginning and the end. I am Luckbinder, Spellweaver, and Keeper of Secrets, and I am here to build a kingdom. I am Aldenon the Wise, and if you haven't heard of me yet, never can you say the same again. The Arl and his son accepted him as an advisor, but he was consistently frustrated by their refusal to take his advice. He spoke of compassion, mercy, and justice, but these virtues were viewed with skepticism by the people of this war-torn age. With Kalanhad, Aldenon finally had a champion who could live up to his ideals. Kalanhad would gain his most infamous companion as he campaigned into lowland Banorn the vaunted warrior Lady Shayna, who fought beside him in many battles. He also married Marin, daughter of Arl Murden. With Lady Shayna at his side and Murden's allies at his back, the new Tarn proved an indomitable force in the Ferelden Valley, winning victory after victory and expanding his territory across the land. The would-be king continued to impress his subjects. One story of his conquest recalls his taking of the Waking Sea Banorn, it is said that when Kalanhad came to demand fealty, Ban Kamene shot his horse out from under him half a league from her castle. Rather than launching an attack, 
Callan had patiently waited outside her walls with his men until nightfall, when the ban opened the gates. She knelt before him and swore her oath, stating, You have proven you have sense and humility, Theron, and no man can hope to lead the ban arm without those gifts. Others were less impressed. When Khaled had returned to his home city of Hyever with an army at his back, Terna Elethea Kuzland had gathered all her bands and refused to recognize him as her king. Kalan had won the ensuing battle, but showed mercy to the defeated. The Kuzlins were allowed to retain their land and the title of their tanner. He also successfully laid siege to Redcliffe Castle, making him one of only three men to have successfully done so, thus securing Eastern Ferelden. He also won popularity among many in Ferelden for his support of the Andrastian faith. Many in Ferelden followed the teachings of the prophet Andraste and were glad to have a champion in Kalanhad. His faith proved a point of contention between him and his advisor, however. Aldenon was suspicious of dogma, and more of the teachings of the Orlesian Chantry, who taught that mages should be confined to ordered circles and overseen by Templars, lest their power harm the people of Thetis, whether through malicious intent or possession. At last, only one serious rival lay between Kalanhad and the Crown. Terran Simeon of Denrim had amassed a multitude of great warriors to face Kalanhad. With their chances of victory uncertain, Aldenon bade Kalanhad seek out the Ash Warriors, an order of fighters that had mastered the battle rage of the dwarves. So Kalanhad departed into the Priscillian Forest. When he returned, the leader of the Ash Warriors, Willem Happier, was indeed by his side, but so was a contingent of circle mages and Templars loyal to the Chantry in Orlais. Through means uncertain, Kalanhad had sought out the support of the Orlesian Chantry on his travels in return for bringing their interpretation of Andrasse's teachings to predominance in Ferelden. Aldenon was aghast and enraged. The Chantry's stance on magic ran against all his beliefs. Just before Callan had met Simeon's forces at the Battle of the White Valley, Aldenon departed. As he did so, he raised his staff and his voice echoed in the hills. A civilization cannot be civil if it condones the slavery of another, and that is what this circle is. But by accident of birth, those mages will be free to live, love, and die as they choose. The circles will break, if it be one year, a decade, a century, or beyond. Tyrants always fall and the downtrodden always strive for freedom. Kalanhad went into battle that day wearing a suit of enchanted silverite armor crafted by the Circle Mages, but absent one of his greatest allies. With Willem Hathir and his Ash Warriors clearing his path, Kalanhad met Tern Simeon in personal combat. Simeon was a great warrior and nearly slew Kalanhad, but Lady Shayna intervened and took a blow intended for the would-be king allowing Kalanhad to kill Simeon and thus emerge victorious. Simeon's death ushered in an era of peace in Ferelden, and Kalanhad spent the next several months caring for Lady Shayna as she recovered from her wounds. In 542 Exalted, Kalanhad called a landsmeet in Denerim, a gathering of all Ferelden's nobility. There, flanked by Chantry mages and Ash warriors, Kalan had beseeched the nobility of Ferelden, and was crowned king, with his wife Marin as his queen. Peace was not to last, however. Legend says that Lady Shayna bore more love for her king than was appropriate. A witch, Taran Simeon's vengeful wife in disguise in some versions of the tale, came and offered her a love potion. She took it and used it to seduce Kalan had. Eventually, their affair was discovered by the queen. Shamed and brokenhearted, Queen Marin fled Denrim and returned her father, Arl Murden. The Arl had been Kalanhad's faithful ally for many years, but when he heard his daughter's tale, he renounced his support for Kalanhad and threatened to restart the civil war. Lady Shayna was remorseful for her manipulation of Kalanhad and confessed her actions to the court. This may have averted further conflict, but rather than punish her use of forbidden magic and abuse of his trust, Kalanhad forgave Lady Shayna. Arl Murdin was incensed at what he saw as the disrespect shown to his daughter and roused his allies against Kalanhad. Against the king's orders, Lady Shayna attempted to meet alone with Queen Marin to sue for peace, but she was discovered by Arl Murdin and slain. 
Angered by her death and saddened by what the situation had come to, Callan had challenged Arl Murden to a duel. As they had once fought at West Hills so long ago, Callan had won, and this time he did not spare his enemy. Even with Murden's death, the threat of renewed civil war persisted. The death of a popular and powerful Arl at the hands of the king was more than Ferelden's nobility could take. Amid this chaos, the king vanished. It is said that Callanhad went to his wife one last time and left her with his sword and a proclamation abdicating the throne in favor of their unborn son. King Waylon I, as he would be remembered, would found the Theron dynasty that has ruled Ferelden ever since, and Callanhad would be counted among the anointed by the Chantry in 788 Storm. But where Callanhad himself went is a mystery. One popular tale among Circle Apprentices states that he sought out the last free apprentices of Aldenon, who had been hunted by Chantry Templars. The tale says that Callanhad found Martyrell the Elusive, Aldenon's last free apprentice, and relayed to him the story of his life and all his regrets, which convinced the mage to tell Callanhad where he could find his old advisor. There is another story that I would be remiss to ignore, although the source is peculiar. The Canari claim that Callanhad was not a knight squire before his ascent, but a common dog handler with a lust for power. They say he struck a bargain with a witch and drank the blood of an ancient dying dragon, and this was the source of his skill and power. We may never know the truth of Callanhad in his story, but his deeds created Ferelden as we know it. He has certainly left his mark on Thetis. Thanks for watching, guys. That was my very first video, so please tell me what you think and tell me what topic you'd like to see covered going forward. Uh, I love Dragon Age lore and really lore in general. Um, I'm trying to keep things focused on the human history in Dragon Age for the time being because everything else is kind of a little bit in flux, but everything's open in the long run. See you next time.